was. It's real. Fast as Bruce Lee, agility of Jackie Chan. He's working without wires, without effect, and it's really him all of the time. Yeah! Tony Jaa began his career as an action stuntman. He moved to Bangkok from his home in the countryside, and then he worked with this wonderful Thai director called Pracha Pinkel and they craft this amazing movie called Ong Back. I think what makes Tony Jaa really special is kind of what you're seeing is what you're seeing. When you see him diving through broken glass, it's really him, and it's really much more substantial glass than is used in American movies. When you see him being attacked by motorcyclists and by vehicles of all kinds, those are real vehicles coming at high speed. We wanted to show our differences from other movies by not using slings or special effects. And the martial arts in this movie is Muay Thai kickboxing. It's more unique than other movies. He's like a live action special effect. You know, the old story about nobody told a bumblebee that it couldn't fly so it can fly. Nobody ever told Tony Jaa that actually to do that stuff, you need wires, you need special effects. So he was in some remote village in Thailand watching all of these action pictures and go out and train. It has this kind of visceral nature because it's got that reality about it. Because really what you're seeing on the screen was really happening on the set. For me to see a modern day film with a modern day style such as the Muay Thai that Tony Jaa is using, uh, the elephant stances that he's bringing to life from classic Thailand culture, to see it being applied to in today's martial art film is really a breath of fresh air. <laughs> The most important symbol of Thailand is the elephant. Most importantly, you rarely see the relationship between humans and elephants, except in Thailand. We respect the elephants as if they were our ancestors, our angels, or our sacred objects. When you work with elephants, you have to have understanding and you have to familiarize the elephants with the crew. During the filming, the elephants were surrounded with film equipment. If the elephants happened to slip, or if there was any problem, someone could be in danger. Sometimes when they shouted action and hit the slate, it scared him too. One time he ran very fast, so I was very cautious. I was quite concerned shooting with an elephant. There's a mother elephant and her baby in the movie, which is actually her real baby. They didn't want to be more than 10 meters apart. Neither of them allowed that. So when I filmed the baby elephant in front of the camera, the mother would have to stay behind the camera where she could see her baby. <laughs> I have a bond with elephants because at home I raise elephants. I have two elephants. They have names too. One is flower, the other is leaf. In that respect, it was great that both the director and my teacher were looking to build a character around me. So they thought about the fact that I have elephants at home, and they brought it up for discussion as to how I could take my techniques in having worked with elephants and utilize them. And that worked really well. When we were filming, it felt natural. It was natural because that's my real life. On the protector, they've actually taken the action of Tony Jaa to another level. They've raised the stakes. Our director felt that normal Thai kickboxing was not enough. He wanted something truly new. But to find the newest, we decided to look into the oldest. And that is when we found these undiscovered boxing techniques that have never been used. In Thai history, when the sword slipped out of a warrior's hand, he would have to improvise. One of these techniques is called elephant destroy coffin, or the throw crush grab break technique. The warrior uses his arm like an elephant's nose to break bones. This film also has some very unique cinematography in it in the sense of the action direction as well as some of the best steady cam work that I've seen. 
bloody sight. I decided to make this long, one single camera movement. Four minutes of non-stop martial arts fighting. This scene required much of Jaw's strength, as well as the endurance of a stunt team. If you know anything about filmmaking, the preparation and the complexity of pulling that off is just staggering. In any of these martial arts action films, it's only as strong as the physical abilities of the hero and the increasing challenges that he must overcome. During the development of the film, Tony Jaa mentioned that he wanted to do a fight scene with a bunch of bikers, rollerbladers, and motorcyclists. It turned out to be his personal favorite. In the difficult stunts, they are real athletes. But in the scene when their bicycles ran into things, we used our own stuntmen. There was also a great bike stunt performed by a real Thai champion. In any action picture, the more interesting, the more ingenious the villain is, get the hell out of here, the better it makes the hero look. And with the protector, we have this great character, Madame Rose, played by a Chinese performer, uh, Zing Jing. And Zing Jing is actually a, a transsexual. I think who might be aware that in Thailand, they actually have this tradition of transvestite performers. How can I ever pay you back? The director showed us the demo. I felt I liked her. This person has talent, skills, and something in her heart. Good at art, dancing, very powerful. When we met, I was very excited. We both admired each other and were very friendly. The Sim Family Corporation is poised to reach new levels of greatness. It's totally unexpected and unconventional. But I think this character is in every way full of surprises. Police are now tracking down Sergeant Mark Anand, who is well known in the downtown area. This is my second movie with Pimam. We are very familiar with each other. He's a very hilarious guy. My character is very serious, can't be funny. That's where P-Mom comes in, to be the comic relief for all the action scenes. Somebody would be filming, but the rest of the crew would be laughing at him. When we were rehearsing a scene in a Thai temple, it was a scene with Sergeant Mark. My character ran to get him and said, we can't be here any longer, go. We rehearsed that scene three times before we started filming. But when we started filming, I said, come, we can't be here any longer. He got up and asked, why not? There wasn't supposed to be any dialogue. But I said in the Northeastern dialect, you can't be here, stupid, go. It was an ad lib. Tony Jaw was cracking up. Go. Well, we come from the same region of Thailand, so we have fun together. Uh, I'm better get here soon. You have this great rogues gallery of martial arts fighters with different abilities. You've got a guy doing capoeira. You've got a guy doing wushu. You've got this massive wrestler. I'll grab his head off. <laughs> I have to be intense. The first time I met Nathan, I was startled. He was huge, and I thought, wow, will he be able to act? But when we acted together, I saw that he has the best actor's spirit.
so that all the villains are genuinely ferocious, genuinely fearsome, and you actually wonder if this naive country boy can win out in the end, because the bad guys are ah so evil, they're so pitiless, and they're so powerful. so i think you do have this wonderful good versus evil, and as in the best action pictures good is the underdog and in the end wins out because of courage, because of integrity, and because of this extraordinary sheer physical stamina. if there's a single underrated figure in the world of international movies at the moment it's Prachak and Kyo. Pracha Pinkow is a director with ideas and creativity. Action! When he gives his directions, he has to use a megaphone because he's so soft-spoken. He's experienced, maintains his composure, and stays cool as a cucumber. He was the guy who saw Tony Jaa, who'd been around for a few years, and said, yes, I can take this guy, I can create a whole new form of Asian action cinema. <laughs> We've got the stunts as good as they can get. We've got the action pieces as good as they can get. How do we actually take it to the next level is by bringing together the best things we have in the West. So it's just so great that the RZA from Wu-Tang Clan is coming in to rescore the protector for the American market. What made me want to do the project because I'm a big fan of Tony Jaws, you know what I mean? His first movie, On Bach, I think was an incredible production. And it was really my pleasure to come in and assist any way I can to make this film a greater impact for the American public because uh, certain films you want your peers to see, certain films you want the public to enjoy, and this is one of those films. Well, actually, it's a very good thing that he's writing new music for this film because I think he can introduce Thai culture to a Western audience that might never have known about it. I think in terms of the uh, American popular culture, the RZA is one of the, the foremost individuals who single-handedly have made Asian cinema accessible to mainstream American audiences. Coming in with the Wu-Tang Clan, he really gave a fresh level of hit to kung fu movies with the way he used to integrate elements from the soundtracks of those films into his music. My approach was really just to kind of find that balance between modern day score over martial art films and the more traditional scores that was used back in the 70s and 80s. There's a scene where you see uh, Tony's about to have the big warehouse fight and you see the skaters coming. And on that particular scene, I was like, yo, skaters, you know, extreme sports, let's go rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you hear the rock guitar come in while these guys are flying through the air on their bikes and on their skates and you hear the rock guitar, but then after that, it goes into score. What I'm really kind of satisfied with is the way we was able to go from score to song production, back to score, back to a techno feel, back to song. And I think that's a different approach than a lot of score guys do. I mean, I think that's what I do to music. I'm always bringing different angles. I think you will enjoy the sound that we made to this. This movie's off the chain, son. In The Protector, you see the physicality and the amazing ability of Tony Jaa and also coming into his own as an actor. I think Tony Jaa should be a movie star who stars in international movies. My inspiration is to, for example, how to make Thai movies world famous and how to make a good reputation for the Thai people. He was born to do this. Oh my God, Tony Jaa, you're amazing. So what I want to do in Ong Bak too is another style of Thai boxing that's derived from the Thai boxing dance or the Thai traditional dance and to mix them together. Another thing is to show Thai swordplay, Kabi Kabong, or sword and pole, which has never been in any movies before. We'll show it in Ong Bak too. I feel he's special. He's different from other people. In the end, it's how to do what I love and be happy.